Get your Harry Potter playlist ready. It is time to art. Now, last time, you'll remember I did some of the face. I started in building up some of the colors there and uh, I was really kind of freaking out about it, although I look at it now and I don't know what I was freaking out about. Today, I'm gonna go in and we're gonna do some, let me get my glasses on. I'm gonna do work on the eyes a little bit and I'm starting with this uh, dark green for the pupil just so that I don't I don't, I don't want to leave it white but I'm not going to color it in super dark in case I want to go back and add some other color in there I don't want to use black as I've told you in a previous video I'm trying to do really nice bright colors so um, the dark green is nice and dark and I'll probably go back in there and do do that a little darker later I might add a little bit of this uh, other color to it this let's see what is it this peacock blue but uh, for now I'm gonna leave it dark green now my eyes have Kind of a weird teal color. Uh, I don't know what that ring is that's right around the eyes. Just kind of a teal color. So I'm using this aquamarine. And I'm, and I'm just going to kind of, like I did with the others, I'm just going to kind of lightly go in there with that. I think this uh, kind of bluish teal color around my eyes is why people always say, oh, you've got blue eyes. And um, the, the bigger part of my pupil is actually kind of a, an olive army green type color. my mirror right here I'm gonna kind of look at this while I'm going I've got the uh, my lighting oh goodness I've got my lighting in here coming from the same angle as it's going to be in the picture where it's hitting her and so that way I can see it's kind of interesting this this part appears to be a little darker oh goodness on this side. I'm not going to do the whole thing darker, but I'm going to do it a little bit at the top. So again, I'm using that peacock blue. Do that at the top and a little bit at the bottom. Because when the light hits my eye from this side, whew, let me use my pencil. <laughs> when it hits from this side, this side is actually darker inside here and this side is much lighter because of the way the light reflects inside there but the opposite of the ring appears a little bit darker so i don't know if that's just because this is so much lighter looking or not I'm going to go, it's, it's going to be solid for right now. I'm going to color the whole, the whole thing solid at the moment. And then I'm going to later go in and add some white for the highlights. And right now I'm going to use this, I'm using a dark green. Actually, you know what? I'm going to start with, my eyes are nowhere near this color, this apple green, but... I'm wanting this to be really, really oversaturated. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just lightly lay that color in there on the bottom and build up from that one. Yeah, last time when I was working on this, like I said, I was just um, 
having some kind of existential crisis <laughs> over why you know everything was just seeming so intense to me and I think it you know like I said I'm trying to trying to do something I'm not used to doing and it uh, I, I needed to step away from it and sometimes that's what you've got to do with art you literally need to step back from it so that you can see it maybe even from across the room so that you can see that your contrast, if you're right up on it, it looks super contrasty. And then when you step way back from it, you may notice it really isn't all that. So, use that, get, go back to that dark green. I gotta be easy with this because it could end up being very, very much too much darken the pupil a little bit more. It's a little bit darker on that inside there. And of course it's going to be a little darker up here at the top where the, the eyelid is. I need to find a white marker of some kind that I can go back in and add the highlights at some point. Trying to add a little bit of the dark at the top and a little bit at the bottom to kind of give that impression that it's rounded. So it's really quite green right now. I may tone that down later, I may not. I have in my eye, I don't know if this is even gonna matter. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. I've got a little red, a little red dot right there in my eye. Not sure what that's about. not super bright so I'll tone it down with the green and I think I'm gonna work I'm gonna leave that for a little bit and I'm gonna work on the lips and I'm and I'm gonna do these just straight up pink you can tell how old these pencils are by that one was 59 cents and right now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kind of map out where I'm gonna have those highlights and stuff in there. I'm gonna have one here, across there. I'm not gonna do a lot of shading with this right now because I want to come back after I've gotten the face. I think this is part of why I was having a hard time with the faces because of all the white that was surrounding it. And it was making it appear really high contrast. But it's good, like I was saying, sometimes to step, step not only step away from it, but to spend some time away from your art. If you're not feeling, um, I don't know if you're, if you're feeling like you're having some problems with it. Say I'm not going to do much shading, and here I go, starting to do it. It 
typically, although depending on where the light source is coming from, the upper lip will be a little bit darker than the bottom one. And that's because usually if you've got a light source that's coming from above, your upper lip is going to be shadowed where your lower lip sticks out just a little bit more. You want an art teacher mode. Okay, I'm going to leave that for right now. We'll come back to that later. Um, I'm feeling kind of happy about that. And I'm going to go in again with this Spanish orange that was intimidating me for some reason last time. And I'm just going to map out some of the areas with the hair. I'm going to kind of lightly go in just so we don't have white eyebrows. My eyebrows are a little bit darker than this. Actually, my hair is strawberry blonde, but it's a little bit closer to this goldenrod color. But like I said, I want this to be high saturation color. So we're just going to put that there so it's not just white. Now, like I said, the light source is coming from here, just like on the camera. So that's why I'm getting that shadow there. It's, it's kind of coming from this angle. But I also want to have a backlight, which has given us that real hot looking uh, rim light along the edge of the face. And so that's going to happen along the hairline as well to kind of light up some of that. So I'm just going to kind of map this out, like I said. where I want my highlight along there. I don't know about you, but my mood really affects my process. But I used to let it affect it way too much. I used to let it stop the process. I'm trying really, really hard not to do that anymore. some of that underdrawing. And like with the other part, I'm just going to go in and kind of lay a solid color in here and then I will go back later and build it up. Be sure and subscribe because a week after I put these art videos up where I do the the full length one, I do a time lapse of the same artwork. So then you can kind of see the process a little bit quicker. Sometimes that helps you process it in your own mind. Now 
at the beginning of the month I do this long form video. I'll do an artwork and talk and feel free to leave any questions in the comments below and I can answer them in the next video. But then right after that, I typically do the next week, I'll have a time lapse with just no talking, just some music. I like to go in there a little bit darker right under a highlight to make that pop up a little bit more. And I'll do that more when I go back with it. This makes me look like I've got super blonde hair. I was a little kid I did. My hair was uh, platinum. Yeah, even though this is really quite soft right now, where I am with this, I am going to really, really push it. I am uh, definitely challenging myself with this one, and I want to push it so that it's really solid, deep colors. High saturation. Probably what I'll do is I'll take a pink. This is where I'm going to get the strawberry in. Is I'm going to take a pink right underneath there to push that. Like I said, I like that nice sharp edge on the highlight of the hair. My hair is not that shiny. I wish it was. I guess if I was a cartoon character, it would be. may even go in with an actual pink pink. Oh yeah, I like that.
take that magenta and what you'll probably notice at this point is that the hat looks like it's almost resting right on the head. It doesn't look like a hat brim that's sticking out any and that's because I don't have any shadow. That's what I noticed kind of last time is I didn't put any sort of shadow along there and so that's what I need to make sure I get in there to kind of push that forward and to push the hair back a little bit. Since I did the lines, the outline in pink on the hair, this really kind of ties it together. And the same is going to happen. There went my references. The same is going to happen with the, um, since I'm trying to do a lot of pink and yellow, um, I'm going to have, obviously, the eyes are green. And so that's really going to pop. So that's going to really pull your, pull your attention in there. But to tie it together, I'm going to have, there's going to be some green liquid in the bottle. And um, I'm going to use the same greens as the eyes in here and up here, although probably in different amounts. So there'll probably be a little bit more of the blue in there and maybe a little bit more of a yellow green in here. But that'll kind of tie all of those greens together. I got that rim like quite as much as I want to and you can't really the problem with these you can't really erase too great with prisma colors but you can a little bit so to fix that I will just darken this side up a little bit to make that appear even lighter That's about all the time we have before my camera cuts out on me. But I want to thank you for watching all the way to the end. And hopefully you can see that the hat's starting to push forward a little bit more as this part recedes in. And uh, I, I think that's pretty good progress for this time. So see you all next time. Thanks for watching.